Some of the first successful attempts date back to the early 20th century, when scientists like Dr. Henry G. Houghton and Dr. Emery Chaffee experimented with dissipating fog and seeding clouds with charged sand. The chief turning point came in the mid-1940s, when scientists like Irving Langmuir, Vincent Schaefer, and Bernard Vonnegut experimented with glaciogenic cloud seeding, using silver iodide to encourage rainfall. Silver iodide is one of the most common chemicals used for cloud seeding. It forces the tiny ice crystals that make up the cloud to fuse together. Once enough tiny ice crystals fuse together, they become heavy and fall to the earth in the form of rain. Government officials in Russia have been experimenting with cloud seeding for years as a way to manipulate the weather. For example, the mayor of Moscow says the cleanup of heavy snow is too expensive, so he wants to displace winter snow to the surrounding towns. This summer? This summer. You, you succeeded in increasing rainfall? Uh, the same result that we've seen since it started in 1997. Some clouds respond very well. Some clouds respond only to a limited degree, maybe one or two instances when, uh, one or two instances when clouds didn't respond as we had hoped, probably because we got to them too late. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. 
Chinese weather control research dates back to 1958. By 1998, the government's weather modification program was launching specially designed rockets and artillery shells loaded with silver iodide into the sky to manipulate the natural weather patterns. The weather modification program is estimated to employ anywhere between 32 to 37,000 people. This program both dissipates and creates clouds. By 2007, it had produced an estimated 250 billion tons of rain and protected thousands of kilometers of land from hail. Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments in the But we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. As early as the late 1940s, American mathematician John von Neumann was researching weather modification and its potential uses in climatic warfare for the U.S. Department of Defense. In the 1950s, Early cloud-bursting experiments were performed by Wilhelm Reich, and in 1956, Dr. Walter Russell was writing of the potential for complete weather control. Let's start off with the terminology of what we're going to be talking about. Weather modification. Modification is the action of modifying something. In this case, it would be the weather. Weather weapon. A weapon is a thing designed or used for inflicting bodily harm or physical damage. Figuratively, it's a means of gaining an advantage or defending oneself in a conflict or contest. Weather warfare. Warfare is an engagement in or the activities involved in war or conflict. Weather modification, weather weapons, and weather warfare is nothing new for people who have kept up with history. These things are openly admitted by the powers that be as well as denied at other times. Even though these things are easily proven, some people deny our extremists. Operation Cumulus was a project of the UK government in the 1950s which was investigating weather manipulation in particularly through sea cloud experiments. The project was operational between 1949 and 1952. The military were controlling the weather for several reasons. As detailed in the minutes of the Air Ministry meeting held on the 3rd of November 1953, they included bogging down enemy movement, incrementing the water flow in rivers and streams to hinder or stop enemy crossings, clearing fog from airfields, August 15th, 1952, near the small town of Lynmouth, England, a massive rainstorm strikes. The river swells. Scores die. It's estimated that 250 times as much rain fell in a period of 24 hours as normally fell in the entire month. The prevailing theory is that it may have been a British military experiment gone bad as they had been known to be conducting cloud seeding tests around that same time. Some witnesses have reported seeing Royal Air Force jets flying in the area, at times disappearing from sight high above the cloud bank. Were they on a routine training mission? Or as some people speculate, were they dumping payloads of silver iodide into the clouds? had been wishing for quite some time in terms of years 
that they had some way of, of slowing, slowing the truck down in Vietnam. That led me to advise the Joint Chiefs of Staff that we had a potential weapon system, and so I was uh, I was asked to uh, start to put together a top secret operation to go to, to Vietnam to see if we couldn't make it rain more over there. As a Operation Popeye, Project Popeye, Multiple Intermediary Compatriot, was a U.S. military cloud seeding operation running from March 20, 1967 until July 5, 1972, during the Vietnam War to extend the monsoon season over Laos, specifically areas of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The operation seeded clouds with silver iodide, resulting in the targeted area seeing an extension of the monsoon period an average of 30 to 45 days. Operation Popeye's objectives are to soften road surfaces on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, cause landslides along roadways, and wash out river crossings. 